They will be called Oaks of Righteousness on display for his splendor.
Um, have you ever had a feeling of having no feeling? It's like living in a home with no ceiling and no rooftop and everything blows in it. It got you sitting all alone in the cold frigid, forced to grow in it, but let your soul live it. Now your soul drifting, you on that road rigid. It's hard to keep a real smile for like a whole instant, but the circumstance never hurt your chance to even stole your vision. But that's a hard move, gotta keep your thoughts cool. Cause you found a groove that can't break from a harsh move. I was making six fifty a month with a family of five, and I was thinking like, how in God's name we survived? Our rent was a thousand. Our car broke down in a slumlord's house, and we lost a child. But we always had food, and we always had heat. But we press on to grow, we won't call it the shrink. But when you've been through a loss, you want to go help the loss. Help them find what is lost without thinking about a cost. So take me to the broken, or the ones who try to hide it. The father all grinding, the single mom trying, the child that's defying, the pastor that's lying, the dealer that's only dealing because jobs keep denying it. The prison where they fighting, the poor man crying, the lawyer with the client, city hall with the giants, I'm implying. You can rise from the pit, just keep climbing. Imply the strong grip, keep rising. You can fly through the mist and no disguise. Don't try to hide your gift. When you're more than a conqueror, the Lord is your proctor, doctor, sponsor, yup, to help you move farther, to help others prosper. It won't be a burden to show hope and purpose and grow for a certain. See, nothing in your past is greater than your future. Where you at is not the end of the race. Look, I'm not trying to motivate you. I'm not trying to inspire you. I'm not trying to help you so I can build my empire. It's not a one-two step to live life at its best. I don't do what I do so I can get big checks. I am not motivational. I come to bring you hope. If you cold, I give you a coat. Not a good quote. It don't matter where you're from, city or suburban, prison or the churches want you to live in courage. We would not call to be celebrities but servants. Whether you jobless or working, you can break through the surface. Remember where you come from. Remember what you've been through. Remember you can help others get the big view. If you realize you're still alive and the work ain't done, you continue to rise because you didn't get there first. It don't mean you won't finish. It's better to have endurance than try to be the quickest. That, that, that rhyme came from a point of actually going through the in-between spot about a year ago. And one of the lines that, that came to me in that song, I said at the beginning, I said, when you've been through a loss, you want to go help the lose. Help them find what is lost without thinking about the cost. So when you've been through some things, it's like, Lord, take me to the ones who think they can't get through but I just got through, and I'm not thinking about a dime, I'm not thinking about no shine, I'm not thinking about a post, I'm not thinking about a stat, I just know the feeling of not having anything. I just know the feeling of the in-between space. I just know the feeling when something is threatening your purpose to where you want to give up. I shouldn't be serving the Lord. I shouldn't be married. I shouldn't have a whole bunch of kids just not by my wife. There's things designed out there to threaten your purpose. Let me explain something to you. The Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He does these things in order. Now, if we all believe God's word is true, then you have to believe what God says about the devil. It is true. He roams like a lion. So when these extra holy people are saying, I just tell the devil, leave me alone. The devil ain't going to bother. That is a lie. You're lying. He's bothering you now because you're lying. The Bible says the devil grows like a lion seeking whom he may devour. So he's always around. The Bible even says when someone gets their house cleaned out, the devil comes walking right back around, just looking in the windows like, yeah, the house is clean, but they ain't got no furniture in there. They didn't filled up with nothing. Yeah, yeah, they shaved and all that. And they not filled up with the Holy Spirit, though. Let me bring, let me bring some bad company to corrupt this good behavior. Let me bring some folks over there so I can get inside this house. Let me hide in the corners. When, when, um, when Samson was being uh, deceived by Delilah, it was crazy because every single time she said something like, show me your strength, and he'd tell her, the word says that he had Philistines hidden. So he couldn't even see where the enemy was hiding at because he was so caught up with a distraction. So the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In other words, he has to steal something from you. It's crazy how he even has to attack you in order. He has to steal something from you. 
to make you feel like to, to kill whatever desire you had, now he can destroy you. Because if you steal my joy, that's suicide. Now anything that was promised to me has been destroyed. The problem is when a lot of us, we don't even recognize the enemy already stole something from us. So now we realize, well, I have no purpose. Well, who said your purpose was in a position anyway? The enemy stole your joy, so now you feel like you have no purpose. The guy who fell from a guy who survived, I think it was about 17 people who actually survived, jumping from the Golden State Bridge, and he said the second he let go, it was instant regret. He regretted it instantly, because the enemy stole his joy, killed his purpose, so now you just left to be destroyed. The, the most beautiful thing, last week when I, when I spoke briefly about the lady who had the issues of blood, um, and it was interesting how everybody was pressing to Jesus, and Jesus only recognized the, the outcast. Jesus only recognized the person who wasn't like everybody else. That's the person he recognized the most. And it was crazy because that woman's purpose wasn't so much of not leading. It wasn't so much of trying to marry a, a, a high official. Her purpose was to break through the crowd of people just so she can get to Jesus. It ain't come with no degree, it ain't come with no money, it ain't come with no mansion, it ain't come with no money, no nothing. It was like, there's a crowd of people there I have to get through in order to get to the Messiah. So if we put that in today's terminology, there's a crowd of things in your mind that's trying to stop you to get to the Messiah, but your purpose in life is to break through the crowd. There's a story when, when Jesus was healing and speaking, and they said, hey, Jesus, your, your, your mothers and your brothers is outside the crowd. They can't get in. And Jesus said, who are my mothers and brothers? My mothers and brothers are the ones who seek me. In other words, if you're letting this crowd stop you from seeking me, we ain't related. That means you got an excuse. I, well, I, can't, I, well, I don't know my purpose. My, you know, my, my purpose is, well, what if I not graduate from this? And what if my, my purpose is to get married? It's supposed to be, your purpose, is, your purpose is not in anything that can burn in the fire. Okay? Your degree can be burnt up in the fire. Your car keys can be burnt up. Your house can be burned up. You can lose your spouse. You can lose your children. Your purpose is to press forward no matter what. But one of the problems is I saw in my life, and I'm sure maybe it's just me. I'm the only person in Monroe County who ever had this problem, because you know, I don't want to be judgmental, that something great will happen, and I'm like, this great thing should lead me to something better, and it leads me to be tested. So if I take a ride, you know, I, I, I learned, I, I love that front thrust kick because I got long legs and I can kick real hard like that. So when they come in, I was watching one of my tapes the other day, dude came in, I said, bam, you know what I mean? Right, right, kick him right back. Then I got this one, right? I back up, right? Dude come at me, right? Boy, he was, he was coming at me with a kick. I backed up, boom, and I watched him fall over, right? So I'm like, yeah, I love these things. Right now, I'm practicing this stuff. I'm learning things, but I've got to put what I learned to the test. What good is it me being a black belt if all I'm doing is frying chicken? What good is it me being a second-degree black belt if the only thing you see me doing is cutting grass? I'm kicking a lawnmower across this thing. I don't need nothing. A lawnmower can't fight back, and I don't get a trophy from that. One of the biggest issues I see that we do is that we get this revelation and we run away from God. Because we think our purpose is just getting the revelation but not being obedient to the word that came from that revelation. Jesus got baptized in Luke. Uh, chapter 1, uh, Luke, Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Luke chapter 3, verse 21, uh, where it says, uh, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, and with you I am well pleased. Great. That's such a beautiful moment. You go to the book of, the book of Acts, um, chapter 28, because there's about four stories in here that has everything to do with revelation and, 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 and purpose and, and all that good stuff. Um, 
Acts chapter 28. Uh, it will be going from size 27. Um, Paul, Paul is sailing to Rome. No, it's 26. It says, um, Paul is telling him, I am not the same, most excellent um, Festus. Paul replied, what I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things, that I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of these escape his notice because it was not, it was not done in, in, in a corner. King of Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, short time or long, I pray that God not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am except for these chains. Now let's go dwell on Paul for a little bit. We all know Paul. Everyone likes to preach from Paul, but just don't like to listen to what he's actually saying. Paul has a, good, a lot of good Christian quotables. Draw near to God, resist the devil, he would flee. I have to do all things to Christ who strength me. That's what Paul said. We talk about what Paul said, we don't talk about what Paul actually did. Paul put himself in the line of fire. Paul knew what his purpose was going to be. It was more than just quotes to be trying to use the word of God as, 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 as band-aids when people are really going through. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Okay, but I'm still hurt. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I'm still hurt. I can do all things to Christ who Paul did this. Paul said this. So what happened was that Paul is telling the king he's in chains. He's being convicted of a whole lot of stuff. He's looked at as a criminal, but he's still giving the message. So much, he's doing something so beautiful as telling this king about Jesus. He said, I wish you, I hope you guys would come saved like me, but just don't ever have to go through what I went through. I don't want you guys to have these chains. I want y'all to be saved. Beautiful. And what happens after that? What happens, why, why didn't I put a marker on that page? Um, what, what happens right after that? Um, it says, uh, uh, first numbers, chapter 28. Mm, yeah, okay. Here it is. Since the harbor was suitable, the winter in, verse 12, the majority decided they would sail on, hoping to reach the Phoenix there. It's before then. Okay, it's verse number seven. We made a slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving to send this. When ye when when the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to Lee and Creek. Opposite of Salvon, we moved along the coast with difficulty and, be, and came to a place called Fair Havens near the town of the sea. Uh, one more. Well, the, I can't find a particular scripture. Well, what happened was after he gets done ministering to this king. He still has to get on the boat. And it was dangerous. They said traveling these seas at this time was more like suicide because it was during hurricane waters. I just that right here. It was like it was like traveling during a hurricane. This is it right here. Verse 16. Is it verse 16? I'm gonna find it though. But um you mean to tell me, and you, we went from witnessing, telling this man about Jesus, doing something that powerful to him, then asking about Jesus, to now I've got to go through hurricane waters? Wait a minute, nothing about this beautiful moment that I just experienced says I should be going through the hurricane waters right now. Jesus, i never forget this. April 2011, uh, Russell Blackman, he's a prophet. I went up to him. I said, I know God has given you a word. What is it? And he said, you're going to go through a storm. It ain't from the devil. It's from me. I want you to read Luke chapter 4. I want you to read Luke chapter chapters 4 through 9. And, and, you know, and don't give the revelation until God says so. I'm like, cool. Oh, God's about to hook me up. Uh, I can't wait to get home and read this. I'm going to have a sermon for days, man. You know, ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. So I get to Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And it said, Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, I already know you're talking to me, Lord. Returned from the Jordan, and he was led by the Spirit in the desert. Where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. 
I'm like, wait a minute. I just had this beautiful moment. This beautiful moment having a spirit, a dove, a sin, some young here, my father's voice, and now I gotta go to the dry desert to get bothered by the devil. Nothing about this beautiful revelation says that should be happening to me. It was like I said with the woman with the issue of blood. It wasn't so much of the blood leaving, it was my purpose is to press to Jesus no matter what the circumstance looks like. So here's the thing. When you get that beautiful revelation from the Lord, when you have that real good, that real good service, what is your next step? What is your next? Are you going to realize your purpose is for your steps to be ordered to test out what you just learned? I said before a while ago when I got married, it was beautiful. I didn't know all that relationship and and, and engagement fun and all the beginning of the marriage and having our first kid was, man, I didn't know all of that was going to be tested when 2015 came along. I didn't know. I'm thinking like, no, nah, it's just smooth sailing. No, 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 it wasn't smooth sailing. I had no idea I was going to be put in a hurricane. See, what happens when your purpose gets threatened? <coughs> what do you go to? Where do you run to? I'm not talking about your goals. I'm not talking about your dreams. I'm talking about your purpose. We were purposed on this earth to praise the Lord and honor him no matter what. Well, Quavis, that sounds good, but if it's not in the Bible, it doesn't count. Let's look at the thief on the cross. Y'all tell, tell me what song he sang. Tell me some of the people he hid. You can't, because the Bible don't speak something. He was a thief for a reason. But when he was on that cross, he looked at Jesus, and he said, this day, remember, he said, remember me. Remember me. That was the only thing that mattered to the Lord. You sought me. It wasn't about the works. It wasn't about the friends you got. It wasn't about who you hung out with. It wasn't about none of that popular stuff. It was like, do you have a heart for me? That is the only thing that matters. Now back to this woman with the issue of blood. You know what's crazy that all those people was pressing on her, but Jesus knew her heart? He said, all these people that's here trying to get to know me, only one person is taking me serious. All these people can sing in one accord. All these people can quote these scriptures, but it's only one person that's saying, I need you. Can Jesus feel you when you praise him? Do Jesus know you when you pray them or he just see you as somebody else? Or he just see you as a person that's like, you know what, they're not really looking for me, they're just going through the motions. I get it. They just want my attention. See, when your purpose becomes threatened, you just go through the motions. But when you know, when you know that there's a threat out here trying to snatch your obedience away, you will press to the Lord no matter what situation he puts you in. Go to book of Nehemiah. Man, that is Nehemiah is a, is a very that's right, Nehemiah, man. That's a, that's some really good books, man. If you if you guys ever get a chance, read read the book of Nehemiah. They only like each each book only got like ten chapters, maybe ten ten, ten eleven chapters or whatever. But they the, the what happened with Nehemiah was that Nehemiah had a very good job. And he was very liked by the king. Very liked by the king. But the thing is, when you're hiding something, it's always going to show. So if you're a pervert, it's going to show. I don't care how many times you say you take me to the king. It's going to show. That's why, well, there was a person in the church that I was always kind of like, you can talk to me from over there. You know, like, you ain't got to be so close to my face. You know, I spoke at his church one time, and it was just like, okay. They come to find out that this person was, um, you know, was a, a, a arrested for, you know, he's a pedophile. And, and, and I'm like, oh, well, I gotta go tell somebody this. But I, I mean, this person tells me I always have that feeling, no matter when that person, whenever that person walked by, I felt it. So even though that happens for evil, 
It happens for good also. So when there is something in your heart that's bigger than what you're doing, it's always going to get noticed. It's always good. That's why when we see people that's acting up, it hurts us sometimes. It's like, man, God has so much for you, and you're just throwing <laughs> it away. So that was the case with Nehemiah. Nehemiah, he's, he's, he's serving the king, and the king is like, what was going on with you? I can see there's something going on with you. He's like, how can I be happy when my people is hurting? How can I be happy when my people is hurting? Well, what do you need from us? Well, he prayed before he gave him an answer. So they end up hooking Nehemiah completely up. So Nehemiah, this is one of the beautiful things about that story. When Nehemiah got his team, they went to the land. He waited for everybody to fall asleep. Then he got up and looked through the land. In the midnight hours when nobody was paying him no attention, he got up. In those alone times when you by yourself, do you get up? When God wakes you up in the middle of the night, is it Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat? It's something else. I know there's something else out there. That, yeah. And there's one more, there's one more. They gotta be. But it'll, it'll be one in a couple of months. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, do you, do you, do you fight to go back to sleep? Or do you get up and, and respond to him? See, Nehemiah got up in the middle of the night and had his, and had his one-on-one with the Lord. So now he gets to build in his wall. So now here comes Sam Ballard and Tobiah. Man, these guys, man. Sam Ballard name means the moon rise. It means sin. Right? Uh, and Tobiah name means God is good. So man, you're supposed to be on my side, but you don't hooked up with something that has nothing to do with nothing. And now y'all antagonizing me? You're saying this wall can't be built because he had a vision. See, when you when, when you walk into God's purpose, he gives you visions, not a dream. People with dreams get offended really quick. People with vision know about burden. If you have vision, there is a burden. You're gonna go through it. You ask for help. Dreamers go jump shit all the time. Ooh, I'm gonna go over here. Oh, let me go over here. I'm just chasing my dream. I'm just chasing my goal. When you have a vision, when you have a vision, you will get doubts. The attack does happen. So now they're, 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 they're trying to intimidate him. They're, they're, they're trying to knock him off his course. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I just got all of this favor from the king and my next step is to be intimidated, A, by a person that's supposed to believe in a bad on sorcerers, sorcerer. This is what my obedience gives me, yup. Because Jesus said if they hated me first, if they hate you, it's because they hated me first. We don't want to be hated, so we won't walk out in any, we won't walk in his purpose. We don't like being, I'm not going to say, oh, y'all want to be hated. I want to be disliked. No, I don't want to be disliked. But it happens. So now, but here's, here's the beautiful part about it. Chapter 4, it says, uh, when the enemy was coming, in, in chapter 4, verse 16, it said, from that day on, half of the men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building a wall, who were carrying materials, did their work with one hand and held the weapon of the other. And, and you guys know what the word Judah means. What is it? Praise. Praise. The word just said, they, they, the word literally just said, they were behind the people of Judah. In other words, they worked behind praise. That means praise was before them as they were working. It said the people of Judah built the wall. So if you want something to be built, it's going to be praise that's going to build these things. But the question is, in the midst of getting your purpose threatened, what is standing before you? Is it his praise? When we praise the Lord, when we worship, is it just our emotions or is it you know God is building something up in you, building something up before you, building something up on the side of you, building something up behind you as you lift your hand for praise? Or it's just another memorized song that makes you feel good. People ask me on one of worship time, why don't I always sit down? A, because I want to. And B, it's like, I sit, that's just how I praise the Lord. I like to sit down and listen. I like to sit down, that's just me. Because I know God is doing something in me at that moment in time. You may never see me open my voice, you may never see me lift my head, but I'm sitting there. God, what did you say in the midst of this whole song? The crazy thing about it, the, uh, what happened in chapter 5, Nehemiah helps the poor, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean to tell me 
He couldn't actually do no work until he was actually tested. He couldn't really, he didn't have the revelation to help out the poor and actually put that revelation to tangible use until he was tested and praise was protecting him and praise was before him because the word said the people of Judah worked with one hand and had a sword in the other, a weapon in the other hand. So praise was doing the fighting for him. Praise was before him. See, one of the biggest things I, I mentioned this last week that we do, we will get that, we will get that praise. We will hold on to it. We like, I feel my purpose right now. How many of y'all ever been in a service and you just felt like the Lord was about to do something to you right now? Like right there in the spot, then as soon as you got in your car, it was gone. Because we are afraid of getting alone. We are afraid of it for some reason. We are afraid of it. When God gives you a word, whether it's here or it's in church, forget about hanging out. Go home and you're getting your car and go home and say, Lord, dissect that word in me. I got all week to hang out with them. Dissect this word in me. When I got baptized back in two, when I got baptized again 12 years ago, man, they, they was, uh, the girl I was with at the time was like, come on over. No, what are you doing? I want to go home. Why? Because I just got renewed. I, I, let me chill. If I want to come to your house, I know where you live. I know where you live. Nehemiah got all this favor. The next thing you know, here come his enemies. These, once you get a word from the Lord, you understand your purpose, and your purpose is to just seek him and be led. And the enemy will try to interrupt that because you won't, because you're not allowing yourself to go through the things you need to go through. You're not allowing yourself to, to be obedient in the tough times. So how does the enemy threaten your purpose? By just quickly doing a detour. So I was like, oh, no, don't go that way. You don't need to go through all that stuff. Just come right back around here. You'll be okay. I said, when you've been through a loss, you want to go help the loss. Some of us ain't experiencing no loss or, or regaining from the loss because we're not going all the way through Jesus got the Spirit, Jesus got the Holy Spirit on him, now he's in the desert. To be tempted by the devil. Y'all understand the thing the devil was trying to make this man do? And make him eat rocks? <laughs> he was trying to get him to fall off the building. He was trying to get him to kill himself. Fall off this building. Man. And listen, anything the devil tells you to do, it's the devil backing you up. Ain't no godly help coming from him. So go ahead, jump off the building, you'll be okay. I, I went through this beautiful moment for this. Right. In the midst of this valley, I'm being tempted to, to be intimate and to eat things that has nothing to do with my body growing. Then I'm being tempted to, to, to harm myself. Now I'm being tempted to, 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 to pride myself all because I got the Holy Spirit, all because God gave me some revelation. All the, yeah, because that's part of the purpose. That's right. That's part of the purpose. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Now it's crazy. Now back to the book of Acts, right? So the, the crazy thing about it, right? In, in, the, in the book of Acts, right? These people, don't, they, they're not listening. They are not listening to, to Paul. They don't want to listen. He was like, let's not go this way. We don't get caught up. They didn't listen. So they, 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 they leaned on their own understanding. Right? They start taking things off the boat. They start shedding off things they feel like it'll work. You ever been in a situation where you know you wasn't hearing from the Lord, but you said, I'm still handing it on my own, so I would just cut the person off. I'm not going to talk to the person, because that person was made to be my distraction. I'm not even going to talk to them. I've got this issue with this person. I can't keep my hands off them. I can't stop thinking about them, so I'm going to cut them off. No, it's the distraction that's leading you to that person. You know what we always say, our battle is not with flesh and blood, it's against principalities and powers. And How come we don't ever think about that when it comes to being physical with a person? Huh? How come you can't pray about the desire? How come you can't get rid of the desire that's messing you up? You got to get rid of that person because they messed up. Right? So I'm going to get rid of shed all this stuff away from me because that will make me better. You get rid of the person and here comes another person. Or you find yourself going back to the person. When you don't listen to the Lord, you try to shut off things that's only going to make you sink anyway. 
You just said you try to get rid of things you think is going to keep you afloat. They keep you afloat for a little bit, but you're still going to break. So what happens is that Paul was like, listen, I got to, I, I, y'all didn't listen to me. I understand you guys are stressed out. I get it. But I got a voice from the Lord. I had an angel came to me from the Lord saying, only thing that's going to be destroyed is this shit. Only thing that's going to be destroyed is this relationship, but you're going to be saved. Only thing that's going to be destroyed is your relationship with that person. Only thing that's going to be destroyed is your mindset towards people. But you are going to be okay. So let's eat. A few scriptures down. They ain't did nothing Paul said. Paul is like, it's been 14 days and y'all went without eating because y'all mind is stressed. You ever notice when you're going through something that may kill your appetite? Your own understanding of how you try to handle things will kill your appetite. It will kill the intimacy, the intimate things you have. Food is something intimate. It will take the very thing you need to stay alive away from you. How many of you ever felt like the word of God been snatched away from you? Because you didn't listen. I got this great word, take me to the king, break every chain. Oceans. Beautiful songs. And as soon as you take that next step to where God is leading you, the stress of life comes and it takes your appetite away. The hurricane comes and the boat explodes. And then the people still trying to kill Paul. Like, man, are you serious? I prayed for y'all. You didn't want to listen to the man of God. I fed y'all. And you still want to kill me? So then he gets to the land. And it said how the people was uh, showing unusual kindness. So he goes and he starts a fire with them. Then a viper attaches itself to him. Now everybody is watching him. Wait a minute, Lord. I went from saving this, help this guy get saved, hitting this hurricane, encouraging the people, starving for 14 days, the boat exploded, still people trying to kill me, helping these people out, and now a snake is on me? I've been through all of that just for a snake to kill me. I am not about to let this snake kill me after everything I've just been through. Let me explain something to you guys. When you're walking in purpose and you're faced with today's giant, let me explain something to you guys. You guys done got through, done used less energy in the past than what you're using was, than was before you. We look at this giant and we sit up and we like, oh, I can't beat this. And God is saying, you use more energy getting rid of that back in the past you can just destroy this thing. Remember what you learned last Wednesday? Remember what you learned last Sunday? You got the strength to knock this thing head off. Wait a minute, David. You fall into Bathsheba and she's not even Goliath's size. How you fall into that? Right. Do you not understand how strong you are? Do you not understand how you were walking in my purpose? I kept you in the field. I kept you around the sheep. You killed the lion. You killed the bear. And you mean to tell me you can't get rid of this? You are a lot stronger than that because you're in my purpose. But once you step out of his purpose and start to believe your purpose is in a position or your purpose is in a compliment or your purpose is in a marriage or your purpose is in some kind of church thing, you will fall to anything. You will become shipwrecked. You will fall to the Bathsheba. You will fall to the temptations of the, of the devil. These things will, you will fall to the people trying to intimidate you. You will forget about praise. But when you know you walk in a purpose, it's like, man, I walk through the rain, bearing no shame, or feeling no pain, or calling his name, his name, his name. It keeps me, it keeps me sustained through the midst of it all. I'm giving him praise. I walk through the rain, bearing no shame, feeling no pain. I'm calling his name, his name, his name. It keeps me sustained through the midst of it all. I'm giving him praise. When you walk in purpose, that's what's before you. That's what's surrounding you. Well, Clarence, that sounds good and, and teary-eyed, but if it's not in the word, it doesn't count. Exodus chapter 14, 13. This was a scripture that's that when I when I I got saved in 95. I walked away from the Lord in 96. And then um came back to my senses in 2006. And these were one of the scriptures that kept me now. We all know the story of Moses. Now to think about Moses. Moses did what he did on his own understanding, he killed somebody. Boom, and he ran off. You know, he, he, he was found in the desert, pastoring, and the Lord spoke to him, right? So then he said, well, I can't speak. It wasn't that he couldn't speak because he spoke to the Lord. Ain't that crazy? I got a speech problem. He's telling the Lord he has a speech problem. Clearly. We only have a speech problem when it comes to talking to the things of God. 
That's it. If God tells you to speak, that's when we stutter. It's always been that. You may think I speak well, I think I'm all right, you know, but it's all, I always need the Lord whenever I do anything. I need the Lord to read his word. I need the Lord to, 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 to put his word together. I need all of that. It was a time in my life when I was preaching every other word, like, do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So when God, you know what I'm saying? And then um, and all I would use was slang. You feel what I'm saying? So I say, you know, then this bro come through and it be like, yo, what are you talking about, man? Like, but being around the Lord and, and, and trusting him and walking in purpose, that's when, you know, things change. So now Moses goes back and goes back to Pharaoh, right? goes back to Pharaoh, you know, the whole let my people go. You know, one of the craziest things, Joyce Meyer said this before. She said that they, he had all the frogs in the land, and when he said, you know what, okay, I'll let the people go tomorrow. She's like, why do you want the frogs in the land for another day? Mm. I'll take care of this on Sunday or on Wednesday. I'll go talk to Jill and cry somebody showed it in. God is like, well, you know I'm ten times more powerful than Jill, right? You know you can have the conversation with me right now. You don't got to hold on to this thing another day. You know that, right? So what happens is that, boom, he gets the people. All of them. And now he's walking. And it says, um, Pharaoh approached the Israelites and looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified, and he cried out to, cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out to Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. If if we would have been there, it would have been if we would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see, will you, the Egyptians you see today, you will no longer see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, "Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on." It's crazy, right? When you are so used to not walking with the Lord, you want to be stuck. I'd rather mess with these kind of people. I'd rather just jump out and hang out with people because it's comfortable. When God is telling you to move forward, yes, it's scary. You know when the threat happens? is when you don't want to move. That's the threat. Because now the Egyptians is coming. Now Moses is faced with the Red Sea. Man, I've got a bunch of crying people around me. My past is behind me, attacking. And before me is this Red Sea. All I can do is lift my hands and wait for something to happen. Once I, and he splits this Red Sea, Water on both sides. I love how they did it in the Prince of Egypt. They show like flashes of whales and other sea creatures on each side. As I'm walking down this valley of obscurity, I don't know if like both sides are going to fall on, or fall on me. But in order for me to be walking across this, it got to be God. It got to be his purpose. Because only walking in his purpose will make the impossible get out your way. Walking in his purpose to make those things happen. I, I can stay on this cliff and embrace the Egyptians and die with the Egyptians because when your past try to move in on your purpose, your past will drown. See, the devil, see, the, the Lord will present you. The devil will expose you. I'd rather be presented because I'm walking in his purpose than allowing the devil to expose you. Now to bring it all back again. In the book of Acts, after he shook off that viper, he shook it off into the fire so it could never return, right? So then they took him to this other person's land where they were sent, that the, the guy's father was sent. That same hand that the enemy attacked, he used to heal people with. Oh, snap. So Jesus not falling off the cliff, he gets out the desert, he goes to Nazareth, he goes to uh, Nazareth just to stand up and speak the word. Oh, snap. Nehemiah, after being attacked, he finally built the wall to start helping the poor. Then we bring it all the way. Then, we, then, then when Moses, man, Moses did all the way that to go bring people out of bondage. Then the woman with the issue of blood, I pressed through everything to get to Jesus. Do you not realize what your purpose is in the, in the physical? Is to help the brokenhearted? 
is to help. Every single one of them stories has something to do with people going through things just so they can help somebody. We try to help people without going through nothing. Yes, your purpose in life is to go through things and praising the Lord in the midst of it. When, when Paul went to go help, well, after Paul shook the viper off his hand, they went and saw a man that was laying sick in the bed. You know what's crazy about that viper? Uh, when you get bitten by a viper, you have up to three hours to get that venom out of you, or you swell up and die. In other words, you swell up, lay sick, and die. So Paul went and saw somebody that was in the position he should have been in. Jesus got out the desert just to tell somebody what it means to speak the word with a pure heart. Nehemiah went through all of that just so the people could, the poor people of that land can stop being treated unfair. Moses did all of that just so he can get those people out of bondage. So let me ask you something. In this purpose you said you've been living, who has God told you to help, help out? I, in my last story before we pray, i never forget this. This is when things intensified for me to help out. This was at my first church when I was um, a, a youth leader. We was doing a uh, spaghetti dinner, fundraiser, whatever. And um, it rained like crazy that day. Now, I walk, you know, just this past Sunday, I had a, I had a, a very nice church outfit because I had to preach, you know, and I had some really nice church boots. And um, I preached here. I went to church, and I came up on the third floor and preached, and I got dropped off on uh, Emerson and Mount Reed. Right? I had a full flash suit, hat, and everything. You know, it was crazy how on Sunday. I got done rapping, had some chips, and I walked from Emerson and Mount Reed to around the court. Right? I, I, I will walk anywhere. I don't, I don't care. You know, um, I tried to walk to Darien Lake one time, but got pulled over. So I, will, I would just go. <laughs> I'm serious. I brought six bottles of water, and by the time I got to the throughway, I was down to my last sip. I'm like, well, I'm going to die. You know, this is, you know, this is crazy. You know, I was going to walk to industry one time, but someone came and got me. Um, so we were doing this to the car, and all the people with the cars got there. I didn't have a car at the time. I don't even think I had a license. And um, the kids that walked in the rain, they, um, they the, the, people, the leaders said, well, y'all can't eat because y'all didn't help prepare. And I sat back. And it was crazy because they had all those kids sitting in the corner. And so I said, I didn't eat neither. You know, I was just like, yo, are we, are we serious? We, were, we, we did a, a leaders retreat. We're going to do small groups. None of them small groups last. I would go from work to school 25 and teach a Bible study. And I would walk to the kids' house and do Bible study. This is about 12 years ago. And all the kids, all the, none of the uh, leaders want to work with those kids. You mean to tell me because a person is different than you, you can't help them out? Man, you know how many people with no cars got into heaven? I'm not, you know how many people with cars are in hell? I'm like, because they ain't got a car, you can't go do anything for them? Are they that, are they that much of a nuisance? So what if on the way here they get shot? Today I was taking Darius to the bus station, kid walking down the street, gun out, cocking it and everything. I didn't want to take old boy. I was busy, so he had to walk, and now he runs into this 14-year-old, this 16-year-old boy with mental issues with a gun. I bet it's hashtag pray for so-and-so then. You mean to tell me because this person ain't got no money or a car, that's the reason I can't help him out? You mean that everything from, from, from being locked up, being homeless, kicked out the military, losing children, fired from churches, Everything that I've been through, you mean to tell me I'm too big to go back and help somebody who, who needs a ride? Quaters, what about the time you walked from Scottsville to, to East Main because they didn't want to give you a ride in the middle of the night? Have you been through anything to realize that somebody needs your help? If the purpose of Jesus was going through everything just to get that thief on the cross, mission done. Because I guarantee you that's who he had on his mind. Like, I got to get to this guy. I know what it's like to be an outcast. I know what it's like to be alone. I can stop right now or I can keep going just so he can know he's loved. Can you give a person a ride that's not going in the direction you're going? If that person ain't got the money, can you help them out? If that person needs help moving, 
If you can't help them, what can you do? If the person ain't that popular and they got something going on, would you go? What's your intention on having relationships with people? Is it for something sexual? Is it because you want to go out with the person? Is it because you want to be connected with the person? Is it part of God's purpose for your life? All of us have purpose to be obedient and to go through it. Last question, how many of you allowed yourself to go through something and found somebody that was just like you before you went through it? That's why I go to the homeless shelters. That's why I go to the jails. That's why I go to the poetry group when you're in. I don't care if somebody likes my poem or not. I know there's somebody in that bar that needs to hear hope. So until God tells me to leave, I ain't leaving. Because I used to be in them same bars. God has blessed you all with purpose. All of you guys are blessed with purpose. But it starts here in the heart. When you reach out to the Lord, does he feel you? Or do you just, you're just another person pressing? Father God, thank you for this time, Lord. Uh, thank you for what it means to walk in purpose, Father God. Uh, the beautiful thing about everybody in here, Lord, they're going to help somebody's child out. <laughs> they're going to embrace somebody's child. Somebody's child is going to run up to them with excitement. Can't wait to see them because it was inside of these folks' heart. Father God, I, I thank you that they're faithful to them, for them even coming here, Father God, as much as they do because they don't have to. But Father God, I pray that they see the purpose in serving you, the, the beauty of it, the beauty of the storm, the beauty of, 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 of helping people out in the midst of it, Father God, of going out of their way to help folks, Father God, because we went out, you went out your way to help us all. Father God, it's so beautiful to see people come and see these folks in their 20s to come here looking for the, uh, be, to be strengthened in their purpose. So Father God, I pray I pray, I pray that they come strengthened in it. I pray that they allow themselves to go through it. I pray that they say no to the good things and say yes to the diet of the self things, just so they can be close to you. And lastly, Father, I pray that you do what you did with Nehemiah. Wake them up in the middle of the night so they can search their hearts, just like Nehemiah searched the land. Father God, I pray that you search their hearts so they can come up with a plan, that they can be surrounded in praise. These things we ask in Jesus' name.